the team keep it clean before we get into this very interesting thought-provoking episode of questions from y'all i gotta give a special shout out to the newest team keep it clean patrons uh one of them being dj shout out to dj becoming a team keep it clean patron and the second shout out goes to asia asia a returning team keep it clean patron I, I appreciate you if anybody would like to become a team keep it clean patron just to show a little extra support to the channel uh which it does go a long way because y'all already know uh you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids and if you don't want to that's fine as well there have been a lot of people that have been patrons over the years there's been a lot of people that have canceled their patreon membership over the years i got no problem with either one i get it because i know stuff is really expensive right now so when you consider oh yeah just let me go support this channel a little bit extra that could be a really tough decision and, and if you, when you decide to cancel i get it trust me I, I really really do but for anybody that's ever been a patron even for one second thank you i appreciate y'all for anybody that's been a channel member even for one second thank you I appreciate y'all i seriously appreciate y'all and i gotta let y'all know every single day that i do because y'all are special uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel we inching inching closer to 75k we'll be there soon enough but subscribe to the channel turn notifications on and run them likes all the way up because this first question to get us started it, it, it caught me for a loop because when i first saw the email i saw the title of the email and i said matt judon what what's that coming from but then i saw from late to work they brought it up because i believe bleacher report they were the first people to bring up the possibility of the baltimore ravens let's just get into it first question came from tammy she said what are your thoughts on one matt judon possibly returning to baltimore Ooh -wee. matt judon you know what's crazy matt judon he left the baltimore ravens and he went on with the Patriots to be a, just a pro, very, very productive. Very productive. The team wasn't all that, but he was very, very productive. Let's look at his numbers after he left Baltimore Ravens. It's only been a couple, well, two years and a half because he was hurt a lot, a lot of last year. But anyway, uh, the first year he left the Baltimore Ravens, 2021, uh, he had 12 and a half sacks. Uh, and then the following year in 2022, he had 15 and a half sacks. So with as a, as a pass rusher, not, now sacks are not everything. They not, but for you to get twelve and a half, then fifteen and a half. Oh, you know what you're doing. You 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 don't get fifteen and a half sacks by chance. No, you got to be a skilled player. And one thing with the Baltimore Ravens, uh, one thing that we know, um, especially with Wink, like Wink was cool, Wink was solid, Wink was straight, um, but Wink was not the best at getting the most uh, out of our guys now was wink even with the baltimore ravens in 2020 though 2020 that was COVID year did we have wink back then i want to say we did but i don't remember for sure no well, well, well 2022 we had that was mike mcdonald's first year and 2023 was mike mcdonald's second year obviously and that's when he was just even more amazing than he was in the first year so yeah we had to have had wink in 2020 and 2021 so, yeah, yeah, so, okay, I'm pretty sure that was when Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, though, because y'all know sometimes I will be loud and wrong going here. But anyway, um, Matt Judon, uh, it, should the Baltimore Ravens bring him back? What about the possibility of bringing Matt Judon back? Uh, the Baltimore Sun, they touched on it. Uh, and like I said, they went a little bit deep as far as the cap hit. The cap hit will be a 7.5. It will be 7.5 mil. Um, that is a, that's a decent cap hit, but um, th they talked about the possibilities. Matt Judon, he's about to be 32 years old. Matt Judon, last, he's coming off an injury. Matt Judon is on a team that looks like they are in rebuild mode when the New England Patriots. Well, they are in rebuild mode. They ain't got their quarterback. They traded Mac Jones to, I think, the Jacksonville Jaguars so he could back up Trevor Lawrence. Um, they are going to be drafting really high. They just the team that's just, they're lost right now. They don't know their way right now. So they got to find their quarterback. They, they got a, uh, Bill Belichick, ain't the, he ain't the head coach anymore. So, yeah, they're they going through some big transitions, some big changes. Um, so Matt Judon could be like, you know what? Mm, you could be looking around like, <laughs> I don't think this is the place for me. I really don't. But then, um, so with, with them being in rebuild mode, that could make it a little easier for the Baltimore Ravens to possibly trade for a Matt Judon, if that's somebody that they would want to acquire. Then you think about their pass rush situation right now. It's a big, big question mark. 
Big question mark. And you think like under Mike McDonald, he got the most out of the Baltimore Ravens pass rush. Now imagine if we still had Mike McDonald. And then we were able to get a Matt Judon. That would be, ooh, okay, it'd be nice. But with Zach Orr, it's a lot of unknowns right now with him. But with him, I, I would expect, we don't know yet, but I would expect him to take a lot of what Mike McDonald did and continue to incorporate that with the Baltimore Ravens moving forward. But again, we will see soon. Um, but with Matt Judon, this would help that outside linebacker. That, it, that would help that department a lot because it would give you somebody that's proven – so especially proven over the past couple of years, again, minus last year because he was hurt. But somebody that can get the job done, somebody that's obviously comfortable in Baltimore. I mean, Marlon Humphrey and Jack Settlement, they just had him on the Punchline podcast uh, a couple of days ago. So, but, so he's still cool with a lot of guys on the team and whatnot. Uh, and then when Matt Judon left, it wasn't, there wasn't no bad blood. He ain't leave. I don't remember him leaving on no bad terms. No, nah, it wasn't nothing like that. So I do think that that could be a real possibility, a little reunion, so to speak. I know a lot of Ravens fans, they were thinking about a reunion with Hollywood Brown, especially with Odell Beckham Jr. leaving, and blah, blah, blah. but then there were a lot of Ravens fans that were like, no, I don't want Hollywood Brown. But anyway, um, so I, 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 could, I could see that happen. I, I, I do think that is a, a realistic um, scenario with Matt Judon coming back. Um, back to what we were talking about with the edge position, it, it's a lot of question marks there. Dot fair away. Good run defender. As far as pass rush, um, we still waiting on him to just be that guy at the pass rush, as a pass rusher, excuse me. Uh, with Adafi away, he comes close a lot. He, he, he comes real close. Uh, but just there's been an issue finishing. A lot of times there's been an issue starting too. But uh, with Adafi away, as far as run defense, he's, he's pretty good with that. Setting the edge, he's pretty good with that. So th those are good qualities that he has. Um, but as far as a pass rush, we got some work to do. So hey, this this could be the year where he takes off. But um, and then opposite him, you got uh David Ajabo, and with David Ajabo, I've I've continued to say, and I will continue to say, well, I hope that he breaks out. I hope that he goes off. I hope that this is his year. But at the same time, if I'm the Baltimore Ravens, I can't be like, all right, David Ajabo, you're gonna be our guy. We're gonna trust you because. The unfortunate matter, I mean, the circumstance, the situation is that you cannot trust him because of the injuries. You can't. You hope that he surprises you. You hope that it's, oh, a job, there goes a job, well, let's go. But he's just been hurt so much. So if somebody's been hurt a lot, especially early in their career, significantly, you cannot be like, all right, you are going to be our main guy at whatever position it may be. Um, so with Matt Judon, it is actually a trade. It's not just one of these trade scenarios where it's like a dream scenario, even though those are my favorite. I, I love thinking about those. I love thinking about the possibilities, even when they're not realistic. But this is one that I really do think is very realistic. Next question came from Nakia. I see the, the ladies of Team Keep It Clean taking over. Let's go. Anyway, she said, what's up, Team Keep It Clean? This isn't a question, but... I just had a thought about something. Just imagine the offense is in pistol formation. Project Pat lined up behind the tackle. Derrick Henry at, at, at fullback. And when Keaton Mitchell gets healthy, he's at running back. As a former collegiate linebacker, not going to lie to you, that's a lot to deal with. LOL, I can just see it now. NFL will make up a rule just for the Ravens. So, Nakia uh, is thinking about some glitchy type stuff. Some cheat code type stuff. Some stuff that the Baltimore Ravens actually did when they had, um, was it Gus Edwards and, I think it was Gus Edwards, Patrick Ricard, and Keaton Mitchell on the field at the same time. They, they didn't bring it out too much. But when they brought it out, it worked literally every single time. But thinking about a scenario with Project Pat and Derrick Henry as the lead blockers for Keaton Mitchell. Oh my goodness. Keaton Mitchell, please get well soon so we can make this a reality. How will the Ravens take advantage of the new league rules? Next question came from Carlton. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the family are doing amazing. I hope you're doing even amazing, girl. Even though that's not a word, but you get what I'm saying. Anyway, he said, as we prepare for what I think may be the weirdest but most entertaining season coming up as a Ravens fan, how do you feel about the hip drop tackle being penalized now and with our new addition, Derrick Henry? Oh, that could be like, that's something that obviously d defenders, they can't. They can't do nothing. As a, as a defender in the NFL, you literally cannot do anything. You cannot even sneeze on an offensive player without getting a 15-yard penalty. You can't do anything. You can't. 
Um, with the hip drop tackle, uh, it's tough, man. It's tough because that's a tackle where you grab somebody and you just you drop them hips. You drop your hips and that pulls them down. It can make them land awkwardly. I know we've seen, of course, Mark Andrews, um, and we've seen other other people get hurt from it too. But I mean, it's football. It's football. People are gonna get hurt from anything. People can get hurt from non-contact injuries. Football is a contact sport. It is a very physical sport, so people are going to get hurt regardless. But with the hip drop tackle, that's something that goes in the Ravens' favor for players like Derrick Henry because it's like, what do you do to stop him? How do you stop him? Like uh, Nakia just mentioned in the previous question, you got the offensive line, then you got a Pat Ricard, and then you got to deal with Derrick Henry. Too. <sighs> My goodness. This dude might break his own 2,000-yard record. He really might. Because with the hip drop tackle, that whole thing, defenders already it's already dangerous enough to be a defender because you gotta really think on your feet and then you could you gotta make split second decisions and then you could overthink it. And when you overthink it, that could lead to some really bad really bad execution. And that's for anybody on the offense or defense side of the ball, but defenders they gotta they gotta do extra thinking. All right, if somebody coming across the middle, do I hit them high? Or do I hit them low? Do I hit them with my shoulder? Do I try to tack what, what, like what do I do? Because I don't wanna get penalized. I don't want to get this 15-yard penalty for my team and cost my team and give up a first down. What do I do? It's, it's got to be so frustrating for defenders to have to think about all that stuff. Because that's a lot. That's a whole lot to deal with. But anyway, um, Carlton said, uh, we've seen enough in the past years that he is very top-heavy. But his legs, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> you sound like uh, John Harbaugh talking about David Ajabo. I remember David Ajabo said, uh, I mean, John Harbaugh said David Ajabo had chicken legs. But anyway. And he said, so teams always shoot for his legs to take him down. I mean, that's a strategy right there with taking down somebody that's big. You, you go for their legs. Because if somebody's big, they, they tough, they strong, they all diesel, they, they, they cocky and all that, you try to tackle them up high, oh, that's a mistake. They may be like, get out of my way. Move off of me. You tackle them low, you take them legs out. You, you take their legs out, then they're they going to fall down. They can't do nothing. So that's just... That's not even necessarily a Derrick Henry thing. It's just a thing. But anyway, he said, do you think the Ravens will benefit from this change and also the kickoff change since we have a head coach known for his special teams and not men? <laughs> he said, do you think the Ravens will benefit from this change and also the kickoff change since we have a head coach known for special teams and not managing games? He said, sorry, still salty about the AFC championship game. Now, look, 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 look. With the AFC championship game, it was not all on Jonathan Harbaugh. Some of it was execution too. Um, it, it was not just 1,000 of say, oh, coaching, coaching, coach. Coaching plays a big part for sure. It really does. But it was not all 1,000% on coaching. But anyway, um, I think as far as the, the kickoff change, I would have loved if the Ravens signed somebody like Cordero Patterson to really try to take advantage of the kickoff rules as much as possible, even though it's, it's like weird now. So now they got to they gotta change Madden too. They got to update Madden. So, and I'm sure that they will, but how, yeah, I, I, you can't really put the hip drop tackle in Madden. But anyway, um, back to uh, the, the other thing. I, I do think the Ravens will benefit from the change, but they will also be hurt by the change because of their defenders. If, if one of their defenders ends up doing a hip drop tackle. I think right now the Bengals, who's that linebacker on the Bengals? Y'all know the, the one that in that Thursday night football Bengals game against the Ravens. This dude literally injured Lamar. He injured Mark Andrews, and he injured one more person. I forgot who it was, but he literally injured th three different people. Three different people all in the same game. I want to say it was Justice, but I forgot who it was. Is it? Man, what's, what's the linebacker's name? I think it's the guy that had said something about Lamar like a couple years ago. It, had, it, it made headlines. I cannot remember his name right now, but either way, like that, that's, that's probably somebody who is going to be suffering. In the league next year He probably gonna get a bunch of fines He probably gonna be so upset He gonna be like Man I'm tired of this I don't even wanna play no more um, Because that's, That was the hip drop king Cause, But anyway um, As far as the Baltimore Ravens Again with players like Derrick Henry Well offensive wise It'll help them But defensive wise I think defenses around the league Will really suffer because of this Next question came from TJ Says, So I've been watching the offseason so far Disappointed as usual uh, When engraving Are the Ravens actually going to give Lamar A game changing Play making Unstoppable Wide receiver Bateman No Flowers Calm down and play And catch the ball anyways 
Jefferson out here catching a pass from Sam Garbage Donald. Terry McLaurin catching passes from Sam who now? Well, he got who traded. Uh, I know, not traded. Yeah, he got traded. Yeah, he got traded. I forgot where they traded Sam Howard to. I think the Seahawks, I think. I forgot though. Anyway, he said, Stephon Diggs can't catch a pass because Josh, everything, uh, throwing everything to the other team. <laughs> hey, he's a Baltimore breed wide receiver. What the team keep it clean is going on. I see what you did there, my friend. What about Devontae Adams? We're going to wait until he's 1,000 years old before we try and get him. <laughs> He said, I'm sick of the Ravens and their team keep it clean, mediocre. EDC needs to go. Hobbs needs to go. They have destroyed the Ravens together since Ozzy stepped down. We haven't won or done anything, and we have straight up wasted Lamar Jackson and all that God-given talent. He needs to leave the Ravens just as I did. I'm sorry, but I don't see the Ravens ever win another Super Bowl with EDC and Hobbs in control. They need to go. Wow, powerful words right there from my guy, TJ. But my guy, TJ, he is always very passionate about each and every one of his takes when it comes to our Baltimore Ravens. So you got to respect the feeling behind everything and the frustration behind it too. Now, a couple of things here. When will the Ravens uh, give Lamar a game-changing playmaker at wide receiver? Well, he does have Zay, Zay Flowers is that, in my opinion. He is a game-changing Playmaker at the wide receiver position Despite what happened in the AFC Championship With the fumble at the one That was tough Man, but that that changed the game So there you go, he's a game changer But no, that um that play just made such a big difference Yeah, You, you can't blame that on coaching But anyway um With the uh, with Zay Flowers, he is one of those With Rashad Bateman it's, it's, it's there They just they haven't gotten it out of him yet. Him and Lamar just not on the same page. If they get on the same page, in my opinion, I think it's game over. If them two can get on the same page. But since they're not, I would not be mad if Ravens still went and got somebody. I, I still think, and I said this before, I, said, I still think that they're going to get another wide receiver. Um, and whether that's through the draft or a veteran, I think they could actually do both. But um, I still think, I don't think they're done at the wide receiver department at all. I really don't. Um, I just they're not gonna go into the season with the guys who they got now. So I, I still think they get somebody of some significance, not just a plug in wide receiver. Oh, here we'll just get this guy just to say we get no, no, no. I think they'll get somebody of some significance at the wide receiver position. Um, now you talked about uh you're sick of the Ravens and mediocre Eric DeCosta. He said he needs to go. He said Hawes needs to go. They have destroyed the Ravens all to get together since Ozzy stepped down. We uh, now that part I, I I disagree with that. Oh, now you did say um, they straight up wasted Lamar Jackson all that God given talent. Now um, for his his rookie year they didn't waste that because he wasn't the start of them. His second year I, they didn't waste that in my opinion because they didn't know what they were gonna get. So his his, his second year in the NFL, his first full season starting. I, I don't think they wasted that because they didn't know who Lamar Jackson was. He came on the scene, destroyed everything. That boy killed it that year, won the MVP, unanimous MVP. Should have had two unanimous MVPs. But that one guy from Buffalo, well, not from Buffalo, but who voted for Josh Allen. Anyway, um, but the third year, third year, I do agree. They they didn't go in like they should have. Fourth year, I agree. They didn't go in like they should have. Fifth year, I... They didn't go in like, well, no, you know what? No, no, no. One of those years, whatever year that they they got Sammy Watkins and they had Hollywood and they got Rashad Bateman. That year, I don't think that they wasted, but they, everybody's getting hurt left and right that year. So that, that, was, that was the year where the roster was good. But then after that, it was like, you know, but then uh, this last year, I mean, last year, great job, EDC. Amazing. That's when he earned my trust. That's when I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, this dude, he got it. And... With you saying that you feel like EDC should go and they're never going to win a Super Bowl as long as EDC and Hobbs are here. If you're saying that about Hobbs, I can see why you saying that. But with EDC, I disagree. reason I disagree is because Eric DaCosta, you look at last year. The Baltimore Ravens not making it to the Super Bowl was absolutely no fault of Eric DaCosta's at all. He built this team better than good and way better than good enough to get to the Super Bowl and to win it. The way that he built this team was amazing. He did a phenomenal job building the Baltimore Ravens roster last year. And the fact that they came up showing the AFC Championship has literally nothing to do with Eric DaCosta whatsoever. 
This team was amazing, as we saw in the regular season. This team had it. They had it all. They had it, and they had depth. They had great starters. They had great depth, and we, we saw it all throughout the year. People would get hurt. The team would not fall off. People would be injured. The team would not drop off. Eric DeCosta did his part, but mm, the rest of everybody, <laughs> they came up short. So I disagree with you on the Eric DeCosta part. As far as John Harbaugh, it's weird, man. It's a very weird thing. It's a weird thing. Because regular season, we ain't worried about regular season. We know regular season, they're going to get the job done. We know the Ravens going to get the job done. As long as Lamar's playing uh, and they got their key, got, they're going to get the job done. Playoffs is where all concern is. Playoffs is where this team just, they, they get really weird. They get very like, even in the Houston game, even in the Houston game where they beat the Houston Texans down after half, the, that first half, it was like, whoa, who are these Ravens? Okay, maybe they're a little, maybe they're a little rusty because they had a week off. And they came out of the second half and they just, that's when they really took off. I was like, okay, there we go. All right. Let's, let's bring that out next week, too. Um, then next week came against the Chiefs, and it was like, who are these guys? One of my guys, JT, brought up a really good point because we talk about all the time the Ravens only ran the ball like six times with their running backs. Uh, but he talked about how maybe the Ravens running backs were losing opportunities because of a lack of good pass protection by the running backs. Um, so that was something that I would have to really watch the game over to look at. But... <laughs> I ain't watching that game over again. I I have not watched any, like, I have not rewatched that game at all. I ain't even rewatched the Houston Texans game. Like, I remember before, before I was somebody who used to really uh, watch a lot of Ravens highlights and stuff from the games and all. I don't do that anymore. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because we just talk about it so much and the highlights, like, oh, man, yeah, we didn't talk about this. Uh, so much so we'll, maybe we don't feel like it but i just i don't do that no more i don't know why but anyway um yeah as far as hobbs it's it's, it's weird it, it's weird but it's because it's like you know again regular season we're gonna be straight we know he could do he could do his thing in regular season they could do their thing in regular season but it's postseason where it's weird now with postseason something we got to remember only one team wins it all only one team wins it all every year and right now that's the annual team has been the kansas city chiefs They've been winning everything. They are the new Patriots. The new Patriots. Um, so Ravens got to figure out a way to beat them. Like just, just how like John Harbaugh, he took care of business against Jim Harbaugh. And like, oh, big brother beat little brother. It was the same way with Andy Reid and John Harbaugh. John Harbaugh came from Andy Reid. And every time that John Harbaugh go against Andy Reid, just about come up short. Come up short. Well, Chiefs Andy Reid. He come up short. Uh, no, we, we beat the Chiefs, what was that, 2021, I think? Whatever year that was, and that, man, in week two, that game was, it was week two or week three? One of the two, I forgot, but that game was amazing. I was, boy, I love that game. That was one of my favorite games uh, in the Lamar Jackson era because it was special, man. It was like, oh, we beat the Chiefs. But all the other games, no, we lost. We lost, and we lost so many different ways. In one game, we got whooped. Uh, I think that was 2020 where we just got whooped. Uh, that's the one where nobody was in the stadium. I think then there's another game where the, the first game was close. Well, anyway, we'll talk about that later. Um, it, it seems as if John Harbaugh just, well, really the team, not even just John Harbaugh, but the team, they, they shrink. They, they, they crumble when it comes to the Chiefs. They got to figure that out. And if they're going to figure it out under Harbaugh, hey, it needs to happen this year. It should have happened last year. But it needs to happen this year. I would say if it doesn't happen this year, even though I've said this before, but if it doesn't happen this year, then yeah, big changes need to come. 